Hello, and welcome to another episode of This Old Get. And what you're seeing here is a 1942, I believe. Let's take a look. It's not coming out very clear. Yeah, 1942 production date. This is a Husqvarna M38 Swedish Mauser. And as you can tell, it's going to need a little bit of work. This is probably one of the finer 6.5 caliber Mausers you can get. Really, really straight and flat shooting gun. I got a really good deal on it, so I jumped on it. And I believe I picked, yeah, I picked this one up locally from Collector's Firearms, actually, here in Houston. So, one thing you'll notice is it's missing a few things. Number one, it doesn't have a disc, because it wasn't re-arsenaled, clearly. It's also missing a bayonet, or a sling swivel mount. It's missing its rear sight. It has the base and the spring, but no sight. It has... Well, it had. I already fixed this off camera, but it had the wrong retaining spring down here for this front barrel band. It was sticking out real proud. So I already, I already swapped that out. I forgot to switch it back before I started filming. It's got this really interesting muzzle brake on it, four chamber. It's pretty long, just threads right on. And let's see, what else? Oh, yeah, it's got the wrong handguard. Strangely enough, it's the correct finish, but it's the wrong handguard. This is for a carbine. So, first things first. I need to disassemble this and get it to a level of identifying if I need to boil anything. And so far, from what I can tell, I don't have to boil anything. Like, there's not a speck of rust on this thing anywhere. So I'm pretty happy about that. Other thing is, is I gotta get this handguard off, which just pulls off, which means I'm gonna need a replacement. But the spring retainer up here is good. The barrel band will hold it in if I get a replacement. So, let me see, is there anything else I need? Sling swivel, that one spring that's already been done, sight, handguard. Oh yeah, the two screws for that. Uh, let's see, everything else is here, as far as I'm aware. Pretty clean, push down the follower. Well, I'll do it when I have two hands, but anyway. Here it is, uh, M38 Swedish Mauser. This is gonna be this episode today. Sit tight, let me get it all apart, and we'll talk about the missing parts. A few moments later. All right, so here we are in all our component parts. It took about five whole minutes to take this apart, not a big deal, but plate's in good shape, no rust. Pretty clean, came right off. Screws were easy to take out. Bolt came out, barreled action is perfect. No rust, perfectly clean, beautifully blued. Probably just oil it down, clean it right up. Uh, this was the original. This was my replacement for the front one. The other one I had was a, re uh, was a copy of this one, which is wrong because the hole is not oblong like this for the cleaning rod to pass through, so I had to buy this. This came from Numeric. And then there's the barrel bands. Uh, this is the little front piece that the cleaning rod passes through here. And that's the pin that holds it in, which is driven through here. There are no cracks, no splits. But what you can probably tell is this thing was heavily sanded down. So it's real thin compared to its original thickness. And the finger grooves are wore out because of it. So, First things first, I took an inventory of missing parts and got a replacement forend. The reason I know this was sanded so much is when I dry fit it on here, this is very proud. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to have to sand this to match this profile. Which now that I think about it, I probably should have sanded it before I took the whole gun apart. Oops. Well, maybe not. What I'll do is I'll just put the front barrel band back on and drop the action back in so it clips in the back and then I can sand that profile down. And what I'll do is I'll lightly go over this with steel wool 
to get some of the finish, what's left of the finish, to come off. And then we will Watco Danish oil this. And I'm thinking it's just going to be the black walnut because it's already a dark rifle. I wanted to just do a different color, but this isn't beach as far as I can tell. So this will be a dark rifle, which is fine. It's no big deal. Uh, as for the other small parts, so uh, I didn't know this, but apparently these are unicorn teeth. This is an M38 rear sight. However, I don't have the slider. So when I put this onto here, it's going to be stuck at 100 yards zero for a while, but that's fine. This came out of uh, Apex. <clears throat> Moving right along, <coughs> I managed to acquire a front sight hood, which I believe goes on this way. Front sight hood with its retaining spring. I had to buy that separately. I uh, believe these came out of... I want to say this came out of, hmm, I got Apex, I got Numeric, and there was one other place. Kind of escapes me right now, but anyway, there's that. That's going to go on there. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Rear swing swivel, that'll go here. Screws, that'll go here. These, I believe, came out of Numeric. Um, this is the pin that holds the leaf side on, so that'll go there. That was also numeric. I actually happen to have a, what is this, an M96 Swedish Mauser sight. Unfortunately, the slider's too wide and the sight's too thick. It's too wide top to bar, side to side, so it wouldn't have fit anyway. And then I also had a 94 carbine sight. Long story how I ended up with that. So I have spare parts. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that's it, really. Yeah, that's it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to loosely put this back together just to hold that handguard on. I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to sand the profile down to match this. And then we will strip the finish. And you will probably see a bunch of still shots at this point. But... It'll be me taking this down, taking that down, uh, coating them both in oil and hanging them. Once that dries, we'll get this whole puppy all put back together, and I'll give you my final thoughts on the Swedish Mauser. So sit tight, enjoy the show. So it's been 20 hours or so because that oil took a long time to dry for some reason this time. But anyway, here it is. One Swedish made penis enlarger pump signed by Austin Powers. No, that's not quite right, is it? No, this is one Swedish made Husk Varna dated 1942 Swedish Mauser. And as you can see from all the pictures and still shots, uh, I got it sort of back. As you can see, got the rear sight in, but I don't have the adjuster, so it's a 100 yard gun for now, till I can find one. This is all done in Watco Dark Walnut Danish Oil that took two days to dry, and I think two coats of tongue oil on top of it. 
as you can see I've sort of rebuilt the finger grooves uh, not proud of how I did it but it got the job done basically I took a Dremel with a drums a sand drum sander attachment and I dove in and then ran it kind of like an end mill as you can see it's not terrible I mean it's functional it was better than it was this side I kind of barked it up just a hair on the corner here I'm not gonna deny it but I suspect I'm gonna build a bridge and get over it because I have a functional rifle now with a working finger groove this took quite a bit of work but I got it profiled so it's not proud it take off about a sixteenth on either, either side of it though it was quite a bit of meat whoever had this gun before me sanded it quite a bit but overall it's structurally intact got the new barrel band springs in this one's got the oblong hole so the so the uh, cleaning rod can pass through I got the sight hood attached with its proper tension spring here I've got the new swing swivel put in it's a bit stiff I croiled it but it's gonna fight me a little bit not a big deal with the new screws uh, what else did I have to get for this I think that's really it so parts list uh, I got them from I got some of the parts from apex I got some of the parts from numeric and surprisingly enough this site actually came from Sentry Arms it was the only part that they had for 38 Mauser so that was cool it took a while to get it but I got it but there it is this old GAT Swedish M38 Mauser dated 1942 so technically this is a World War II rifle I don't know what the deal is with this there's no disc here Maybe somebody changed the stock and filled this in. I don't know. It's clean, smooth. Whoever did it did an okay job, but it's kind of ugly, but it's functional. And on this side, it's pretty. Really pretty. Really nice stock, actually. Curl in the woods kind of nice down here on the underside. Didn't have any surprises. No rust, no funk, no mung. Essentially, what I'm going to do now is just handle it and this will dull down just a bit and then I'll hit it with some of that uh, I forgot what it's called it's like beeswax and oil it's like a wooden wood feed or something like that I found it on Amazon maybe I'll put a picture down below but it, it works really good on older wood too so anyway this is my old gat the Swedish Mauser I think I've said that already three times so sorry for that but I want to thank you all for watching and tuning in to this old gat and I do actually have several episodes of this old gat for the future already in my possession. So let me see if I can grab one real quick and I'll show you. Let's turn this here. So we've been doing a lot of rifles, as you can see, and I thought maybe it would be time to start doing a couple of pistols. So I happened to acquire this and this. So what you're looking at here is a Davis infallible pistol. 32 ACP. It's got a really weird safety on it. Striker fired. This is not a tilt barrel. This is a weird gun. Really weird. This is a late model because you have to drive this pin out instead of having a little flip lever. I know that much. I also know that the magazine release spring is really weak, as is the striker spring. But this ought to clean up pretty good. And this is a German Ortgies, also in 32 ACP. And mechanically, this one's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just going to refinish it. Trying to decide if I want to polish it to shine or try to put a blue back on it. Not really sure yet. I'm on the fence on this one, but this is the best one out of the two so far. I also picked up a... It's called a Belgian prize machine gun. Double barrel side-by-side -side shotgun. I would show you that one on camera, but it's really a derelict. And there's too many people that are trying to scream that it's an NFA item, even though it's completely broken. It'll never shoot again. The barrels are bulged. The strikers don't work. The only thing that works is the action to break it open, which automatically engages, engages the safety. But someone did take a saw to it, and it's in pretty poor shape. So what I'd probably do for that is just boil it and make a really pretty wall hanger for the guy who sent it to me, because I don't want to keep it. 
even if it is an NFA item or not, I'm not going to wonder. I'm just going to clean it and get rid of it because it's, it's not mine anyway, so whatever. But this old gat, maybe for this or this or maybe the Bertier I bought a couple of months ago that I still haven't even taken out of the box. I, I took it out of the box. I just didn't do anything with it yet. Still trying to decide how I want to build that one out. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a regular here, welcome back. Maybe check my other playlists to see if my other interests may be of interest to you. Either way, hit the old like button, subscribe, share, tell your friends. Maybe keep an eye out for Ponery's Penny Arcades or the Week in Review chat that we host every Saturday from 10 to noon. Unless I've gone mental like I did last week. Anyway, I've already wasted enough of your time. Later.